But I wanted to give um let me move. I wanted to give my five disappointments and five surprises. Now, these are pleasant surprises. I'm going to start with a disappointment because I don't like starting. I don't like ending a list or lists or whatever. I don't like ending it on 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 negativity. So let me start with my five disappointments. Now, these 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 teams or, or these whatever's on the list, I thought were going to be a, a whole hell of a lot better. Either they had a, 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 a busy offseason. They were projected to be a lot better than they have been this year. There's a lot going. There's a lot of reasons why all these people are, or all these teams or whatever are on this list, and we'll go over it. Let me start with the Steelers' offense. Now, I shouldn't be surprised. I shouldn't be surprised because of what we saw last year. This offense looks pretty much. The I the same exact offense we saw last year couldn't run the ball. Big Ben could not throw downfield more than ten yards. They didn't have a they did they, they had a lot more drops last year than they do right now. But th- this offense is horrible. This offense and Big Ben's inability or pretty much deterioration of his game and arm is the reason why the Steelers are not as good as they should be. Or there, it's like such a huge discrepancy between their talent of the defense and the talent of the offense. Name they have big names. I mean, you have you have uh, Nikhil Harry. You or not Nikhil Harry. You have uh, Najee Harris. I'm, I apologize. You have Claypool. You have Juju. They have big names. They're just horrible. But the reason why they're on the disappointment list is because they had these problems last year. And you would think you have a whole offseason, you you have the draft, you have free agency. I would think that they would address the offense. The hell, Pouncey left. I would address I would I would think they would address the, the offensive line, and they did not. <laughs> and I also would think that they would look at last year in the totality and think, all right, even though that we were eleven and oh, Big Ben was god awful. And I don't know why a lot of people think that the season stops at week 11. <laughs> like, they had to play, what, five more games, and they got destroyed in the playoffs. In fact, they only won or made it to the playoffs because they were 11-0. and 0. Like, if they were playing up to – or if they, if you looked at the t- where they were going into the playoffs, they had absolutely no, sh- no chance. And they're just a disappointment to me because, again, this team looks exactly how it looked the end of last year. Like, nothing has changed as far as their defense is still incredible, probably one of the best defenses in the league, but they have one of the worst offenses in the league. I think they're last in rushing, even with Najee Harris, who is a – I understand he's a rookie, but he's a really good running back. So that's, that's one disappointment for me. Now, we just talked about them. Carson Wentz and the Colts offense. They brought on, this is, that's, that's I guess, number two. They're not really ranked or anything, but my next disappointment is Carson Wentz and the Colts offense. You, you brought Carson Wentz because you thought that he would be 10 times better than Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers got you to the playoffs, and they were within a half away of making it to, or beating the Bills. So I understand the thinking of all right. We bring in, we bring in uh, Carson Wentz. He, can, I understand he had a, a very a, a rough rough ending to his Philadelphia days, but he is a quote unquote Super Bowl champion, and he was. And I keep saying this all the time. He was an MVP front runner with Frank Wright. So I understand you pairing him back with Frank Wright. You would think that was the move, and, and I mean you 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 exceeded expectations against or with Philip Rivers, who clearly was out the door. I mean, he's coaching high school football, I think, right now. But Carson Wentz has looked bad. I understand he has two left or uh, two sprained ankles, but he his his like erratic play has been horrible and their offense has been bad. I understand Ty or Ty I understand T.Y. Hilton is not there, but they're 
there has been horrible. And, and and I think it's even more. It's kind of like the the Steelers, man. Now the 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 Colts defense is not as good as the Steelers defense, but the Colts defense has been really good. DeForest Buckner and all those people, like they have been really good. They've been so good that they were they they felt okay and comfortable enough to let Justin Houston go. And you see how he's looked with the in Baltimore. But Carson Wentz and the Colts offense has been there. There, that's that's probably the biggest reason why they're three and are zero and three right now. The Colts, the Indianapolis Colts, who had a lot of people thought that they would be good enough to at least put their name in the ring for the Super Bowl or at least make some noise in the AFC. That team right now is 0-3 because of how bad Carson Wentz and that offense has looked. I understand that they don't have the the biggest names as far as like skill players, but they're, they're, they shouldn't be as bad or they shouldn't be. They're not 0-3 bad. Let me say this. They're 0-3, but they should not be 0-3 bad. A lot of that is because of Carson Wentz and his uh, sporadic play in the offensive or the Colts offense, and that's why they land on my or one of my five disappointments. Another one of my number three, I guess. Again, it's, it's not ranked from you know most or whatever. It's just five of them. Number three, I talked about this a little bit last week or last episode. The Falcons let Calvin Johnson leave. I'm not Calvin Johnson. Let Julio Jones leave. Because they felt confident that they were going to draft Kyle Pitts and they were going to use Kyle Pitts sort of in the same way as Julio Jones. Now, no, you weren't going to use him the same exact way as Julio Jones. One, because he's not Julio Jones. Julio Jones will go down as one of the best wide receivers of all, like one of one of the best wide receivers the league has ever seen. Not to mention Kyle Pitts is not a wide receiver. He's a tight end, even though he does have wide receiver speed, wide receiver talent. But you draft Kyle Pitts fourth. One, two, three, fourth. And you barely throw him the ball. And this is on, this isn't like the Kansas City Chiefs. This isn't a, a, a team just overflowing with talent at the offensive position. This isn't like the Bucks, a team overflowing with offensive talent. This is a team that really only has two good skilled people. In, and that is Calvin Ridley who has been a number two ever since he got into the league. And now that he's seeing number one coverage, he's kind of struggled. And Kyle Pitts. So my third disappointment is the Atlanta Falcons usage for Kyle Pitts. Now, I did say that last week, or last episode, I did say that a lot of this was stemmed because of fantasy. I draft him fantasy. But no, this take is not due to fantasy. There was a lot wrong. Like a lot wrong with the with the Atlanta Falcons from their offensive line, from their defense, from their running back position. There was a lot wrong, meaning you could go a lot of different ways at the fourth overall pick. So technically, they did what they were supposed to do. You went and got the best player at the fourth pick, which was Kyle Pitts. Understandable. Why the hell do you not use him? I think last game he only had like three three targets, three or four targets. I, I it for the life of me, and and the thing is, even when they target him, he's he's flourishing. It's just why not target him more? It doesn't make sense. You you pretty much to pick him fourth. You think that he's going to be a game changer day one. And he has been good from what what she's been given. It's just why not give him more? It doesn't make sense. The Falcons are not good, especially offensively. So it's like, why not try to get it to your best players? You see, the 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 Cincinnati Bengals did not take long for us to realize, oh shoot, they're going to use Jamar Chase a lot. Hell, not saying he's had the greatest start to the season, but the Dolphins have told us or, or shown us, okay, they're going to use Jalen Waddle a lot. Why the hell? Has Kyle Pitts not 
got the same treatment. Like, why, what, what is going on? I understand Matt Ryan isn't the greatest quarterback anymore, but three or four targets a game? Bro, Bronk. I'm not, I'm not comparing them. I'm not comparing them. One is clearly a lot better than the other. But look at Gronk. Look at Travis Kelsey. Look at George Kittle. You think that they're getting only three targets? Gronk at his age to, and, and his, you know, his age today. And when I say age, I mean like basket or football age, because you know, he's 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 dealt with a lot of injury, dealt with a lot of punishment. So look at Gronk, look at Travis Kelsey, look at George Kittle. You think that they're only getting three to four targets a game? George Kittle, not George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, who just, what, finished second in receiving for both tight end and, well, number one in tight end, but second in receiving. You think he's getting three targets? And a lot of people were saying that Kyle Pitts has the same type of athleticism and, and same type of skill that Travis Kelsey has. So why does he not get any looks? Three to four is wild to me. That's number three. Number four is the Washington football team. It's defense. Do you know how much money you probably would have won off me if we would have bet that in week four, the Washington football team's best unit is their offense? Washington has given up, I think, like, I know they're in the bottom five of yards allowed, rushing yards allowed. Like, I knew going into the season that there were still question marks with their secondary. I, I knew that. Like, we, that's, we knew that. Even though you have Fuller, there were still question marks with their secondary. But I didn't think, I thought that because – the defensive front was supposed to be so dominant with with Jonathan Allen and Chase Young and and Montez Sweat and Deron Payne, Jamie Davis, uh, Holcomb. I thought that their defensive front would be able to mask, or de their defensive front would be so good that they'll be able to mask the problems that they have second in the, in the secondary. Boy, was high wrong. <laughs> oh man, they've been oh Washington's defense. And and it, now, do I think they can turn around? Yes, hell, all these can turn around. The the I don't I don't see it, but the 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 Steelers offense can turn, can get better. Atlanta can start force feeding Kyle Pitts. Uh, Carson Wentz can turn. Or Carson Wentz can be good. So all of this can turn around, but boy. Washington's defense has been by far their worst unit. And it's, 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 ugh. it's been horrible, man. It's, and this is so disappointing to me because, again, you had, you have the defensive rookie of the year. And I thought that he would be a dark horse for the rookie, for the defensive player of the year. Chase Young has not been good. Nobody on the defense has been good. It's been straight, but now you look and say, well, Jay, wait, wait, come on, Jay. He's, they're playing against, they played against Josh Allen. You had Josh Allen and the Chief, or Josh Allen and the Bills. You thought they would be good enough to at least make it to a Super Bowl. They have Super Bowl aspirations. That's how good they are. Okay, I got it. You said, that, wait, Jay, they played the Chargers, Justin Herbert. A new retooled offensive line, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, like come on, Austin Eckler. Okay, they played the they played the Giants. Now, yes, they beat the Giants by one point, by the way, but they beat the Giants, and they had Daniel Jones looking like Lamar Jackson. In fact, that Daniel Jones looking like Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. The only problem is Darius Slayton couldn't catch the ball. The deep man, the Washington defense has been extremely disappointing. Like, it's not even it's it's been bad. It's been bad. They, I, I I mean they have the pieces still. Like, 
by name they have the pieces that that can turn around again they have the defensive rookie of the year last year so they could definitely turn around but you know we need to see it because f- four weeks in or three weeks in at least it ain't it ain't it ain't been good <laughs> so and number five now he hasn't disappointed me let me say this let me yes he has he hasn't been bad he just hasn't been good and that is alvin kamara Going into the season, I had Alvin Kamara winning the Offensive Player of the Year. And that was because Drew Brees' time was up. You know, he retired. There was a lot of uh, question marks about how is Jameis Winston going to do. Uh, Mike Thomas isn't there, so Emmanuel Sanders is gone. So you don't really have that number one receiver. A lot of their receivers are either young or not really proven. The one proven commodity on this offense was Alvin Kamara. And Alvin Kamara is so good that he can affect the running game and the passing game. So I thought that Alvin Kamara was going to get so many opportunities. Like, I thought he was going to get the most opportunities probably he's ever seen or hasn't seen since college. And I thought that they would lean on him. And the thing is, they've tried to do that. It just hasn't worked. Alvin Kamara, he hasn't been bad. Let me say that. He hasn't been bad. He hasn't like been detrimental to his team. But he has not been great. He hasn't been the best. Like, he hasn't really done anything for the Saints to win. Like, he has a couple touchdowns. But he hasn't been, like, that game changer that I thought he would be. That's why I guess he's going to land on my disappointment because he hasn't been that good. And they need him to be good. Don't let it fool you. Yeah, the Saints are what two and one, but a lot of that, most of that, is due to the fact of their defense and Jameis Winston. A lot of that is not because of Alvin Kamara, like at all. Alvin Kamara, to me, it, it, it seems like Alvin Kamara is just another guy, and that should not be the case, especially how good he is and how important he was even just last year. So, those are my five disappointments, man. The Steelers' offense. How Atlanta uses Kyle Pitts, Alvin Kamara, Washington's defense, and Carson Wentz's Carson Wentz's play, and the Colts, you know, Carson Wentz and the Colts offense. So again, all of this can change. All they can all get better. It's only week four, uh, but yeah, man, they, those have been big disappointments to me.